Breaking news. I am here bringing you today Cannon Buster Season 1 review. Yes, I am fully aware that this anime is over a month old. Yes, I'm aware that there are plenty of reviews out there already on YouTube. But that does not change the fact that I'm going to give my two cents. And after looking at the reviews and really reading comments, you see a lot of people who say, I don't know why people dislike this anime. I don't know why this receives so much hate. I don't know why people criticize this anime. First of all, nothing is above criticism. Let's just get that out the way. Some things just need more criticism than others. Let's just be honest. And Cannon Busters, in my opinion, is a show that needs heavy criticism and a lot of direction and this is just me giving my two cents on the internet I have no intention of the creator ever looking at this video or ever responding to this video this is just my personal opinions from what it is that I watched as a writer myself I can say that character development plot pacing and storytelling was very shaky for this uh, anime that Netflix has presented to us and here we go but before I get into the review, go plus ultra and smash that subscribe button. It lets me know that you rock with the content that I put out. And without further ado, let's get into this review. Now, Cannon Buster starts off with a lot of questions that need to be answered. I'm going to try to keep this as uniform as possible, following a chronological order of the episodes. Even though I'm not going to review every single episode, there are key points that we need to take out of the episodes. The first big thing is when we're introduced to the first trio. Now, I need to back up real quick. Within Cannon Busters, it's going to follow two different stories. You're going to get the story of Philly the Kid, Sam, and Casey. Then you're also going to get the story of Odin and the prince of the Bodica Empire, Kelby. It kicks off with Philly, Casey, and Sam meeting. Now, Sam and Casey, there are two androids. Sam is a Cannon Buster, right? The name of the series. Philly the Kid is a wanted fugitive that is immortal. And by immortal, I mean he cannot die. But throughout the entirety of the series, I think he has died in every way possible. He has been shot. He has been poisoned. He has been cut with the katana. He has been eaten alive by a ferocious man-eating plant in the forest and digested with acid. He has had his life force taken from him by a crazed fetter magician multiple times. I think he died eight times by that magician. And then he was shot some more times. So, Philly is a notorious wanted criminal that Sam and Casey are looking for, for whatever reason, because they want, they want him to escort them back to the Bodica Empire. So, instantly, if they're looking for this wanted fugitive, you're going to think he's going to be a badass. Wrong. He sucks at everything he does. And it's crazy because his name's Philly the Kid. Obviously, it's a play on Billy the Kid, who was, you know, a Western outlaw famed for badassery and gunslinging but philly is trash at everything he does a lot of and he's dumb as fuck he is a lot of almost all the situations he got into could have been prevented he's just so stupid and it's that that uncanny unwitty humor that he has right granted there were some funny moments i'm not going to sit here and say that there weren't but it's that weird sense of humor between the two of them in the most inopportune situations that kind of gets you because while he agreed to help Sam and Casey get back to the Bodica Empire he has no intention of doing so multiple points in the series he's threatening to kick them out of the car or he does kick them out the car and leaves them only to go back and pick them up again because he starts to develop a soft spot for him but that doesn't change the fact for six episodes you realize that, wow, they're really not doing anything in these six episodes. Nothing extravagant has happened. They're not making any progress to the Bodica Empire at all. Matter of fact, Philly the Kid at, at, at multiple points was going to sell Sam and Casey to people he owed money to. The reason he's wanted is because he owes so much debt to people that he, ha he, he has to pay him off, so he's always on the run. Two points in the series that you really want the answers to, you don't get the answers to till so late. It doesn't even matter at that point. One, being, how is this nigga immortal? And two, how, what is a cannon buster? And why is Sam a cannon buster? And why does she not know that she's a cannon buster? And why doesn't anyone else in the world know what a cannon buster is? The only person, the only time we get to hear the word cannon buster is at episode one and episode 12. That's it. 
and it was some random guy that they were fighting. Uh, the bounty hunters that was trying to capture Philly saw Sam transform. Was like, oh my God, she's a cannon buster. But there's no explanation to what a cannon buster is. And after that whole situation, nobody else mentioned the cannon buster again the entire series. Every time they saw her transform, she probably transformed maybe five five times. I'll say five times in the first season. Five people saw her transform. No, they were like, what is she? What is that? I have no idea what that is. So we don't find out until episode 12 what a cannon buster is. And it's like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. I don't care anymore. It's episode 12. It's, it's over. I don't care. Um, and you don't know why Philly, the kid, is immortal. He's not good at fighting. He's not a gunslinger. He can't wield a sword. He, he willingly drinks poison. Not willingly drinks poison. That would be different. If Philly the Kid was an immortal who had a reckless sense of abandonment for his life because he knew he was immortal, that's different. You see what I'm saying? Think of um, Wolverine from the X-Men, right? Wolverine from the X-Men will run into a hail of gunfire because he knows he's going to be okay. But he's still a badass. Philly the Kid is just stupid. So he dies. And then when you finally find out why he's immortal, it's like it took too long. Like point blank period, it took too long. I don't care if he's immortal anymore. Basically, we find out that he's immortal because his family was killed by the Bodica Empire. By the Bodica Empire, uh, robots came, burned his town down, killed his mom, killed his dad, and now he wants to seek revenge on the Bodica Empire. But you only find that out when he's in a situation. I'm not mad about how we found it out, but when we found it out, it was kind of like an aha moment. Like, if you want, why is it we're just now hearing about the revenge plan, right? We should have heard about the revenge plan the minute Sam introduced herself as a Bodica robot from that empire. We should have found out then, right? But it was in episode six, The Unfettered. And basically The Unfettered is a is a is a magician who is cursed by a sorcerer who has to drain the life force of humans in order to uh sustain this ravenous hunger that he has, right? He doesn't want to kill because he recognizes that these are good people, but he has no choice. Otherwise, he's going to die if he doesn't get these life force energy. So, basically, they go to this town. And this is why I say it's fucked up. Because the only reason they're at the town is because Philly is going to sell Sam and Casey to somebody he owes a debt to. That's the only reason they're at the town. The Unfettered captures Philly the Kid because he's a jackass and doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And he starts draining his life force, which kills him. It was then that the Unfeathered realized that you can't die. So he's like, yes, finally, I get to have a constant food source that I can continuously drain. And I won't have to feel guilty about killing everybody else. And the reason he doesn't feel guilty about... The reason he doesn't feel guilty about killing Billy the Kid is because once he drains the life force of somebody, he gets glimpses into their memories and their past. So basically, this is the only time in the entire series that we get any sort of glimpse into Philly the Kid's past. It was through the Unfettered that we see the past of Philly the Kid. And basically, the Unfeathered is like, you want to get revenge for your parents' death and your village's death. But what have you been doing with your immortality? Nothing. You've been messing around with women, getting drunk, killing people, and you have done nothing with this gift that you have been given by a sorcerer. He sold his soul to a sorcerer that he met in the woods the night he was running for his life. Convenient. And basically the Unfeather is like, you've done nothing. And he says some real shit. He was like, you want to get revenge on the Bodica Empire. And you're traveling with one of the royal androids of the Bodica Empire. And you have done nothing up until this point. That is when I knew. Right then and there. They have been messing around this entire time for six episodes doing nothing just driving around but you want to know why i never noticed it is because you remember at the beginning when i said this has two storylines well this is the second storyline i never noticed that storyline problem because the second storyline problem was so interesting to me so the bodica empire they're trying to travel to the bodica empire to find kelby they were separated sam and kelby they were separated because a sorcerer came and invaded the Bodica Empire and overtook the king. So the king is captured. The king ordered Odin to take his son, the prince, Kelby, 
and go. I forgot where they're trying to go to, but it's some prison that's really fortified. That's where Odin is taking Kelby. To take him and go and hide there and, like, you know where to take him, basically. So that all is currently happening, and that's running at the same time as the first storyline is running. But this storyline is much more interesting because the person who overtook the kingdom is the king's second son that he basically banished from the kingdom and then he made everybody forget about him. And then he himself also forgot about him. So now you're following Odin and Kelby as they have to outrun the uh, the kingdom's robot androids that are reprogrammed and also outrun bandits and mercenaries who are being paid to track them down. Now, at this point, there are no cannon busters after this man. So, it's still, Sam is the only cannon buster that we've introduced to. So this whole time, you're watching cannon busters and not knowing what the fuck a cannon buster is. Imagine if Naruto was never introduced to us in the series that's named after him. That would be absurd. Imagine if we found out who Naruto was at the tuning exams. You're like, I don't even care anymore who Naruto is. I like all these other characters now. All these other characters are more interesting because I don't know who Naruto is. Imagine if Luffy was going after the One Piece and we never knew what the One Piece was. You're like, I don't care what the One Piece is. I'm more interested in whatever they're doing at that current moment. That's, that's kind of like right here. Like, you don't even care. There's no character development at all you could argue that philly gets a little bit more compassion but he really doesn't i mean kind of literally at the last possible the last two episodes you see more character development when he finally catches up with kelby because like i said at episode six with the unfettered the unfettered was like yo you you want revenge but you're not even trying to get revenge he had no plan for revenge at all until the unfettered said something and then from episode 7 to 12, that's when you see them really start making a move for the Bodica Empire. And that's when they run into Odin and Kelby. And this brings me to my third point during the review, right? Kelby and Sam were always portrayed as best of friends. But you never truly got to see Kelby's development as a character because they were like the backstory that was happening during the, the main story. So... The only thing that you ever got to see was flashbacks of Kelby and Sam together in Kelby, I'm sorry, in Sam's memory. When they finally run into Kelby, Kelby's acting like a whole dick to Sam. Basically, it was like, yo, I don't, like, you're just a robot, you're just an android, you don't have memory, you don't have feelings, you don't know anything, I, I like, we're not friends. And you're like, this, like, we just spent the whole show trying to get to you thinking you're cool, but you're really a spoiled brat, like, please, bro, Sam, blow him up, blow him up, um, so literally, everything is happening between episode 10 to 12, and it's just like, okay, the last thing I like is when you have to jam-pack everything into the final episodes, because you did a horrible job of pacing in the beginning episodes, which is exactly what happens here, Billy the Kid finally gets his hands on Kelby, that's when you really see Sam go cannon buster. Now, mind you, she's in front of the royal family. Well, Odin and Kelby, but you can't really expect Kelby to know what a cannon buster is. He's, he's young. And spoilers, Odin does tell us what a cannon buster is at the last episode within the last minute of the show. Again, I don't care. But Odin does know what a cannon buster is. So it would seem like the higher-ups of the royal family know what they are, but still, nonetheless, it, it took too damn long. That doesn't explain how the Scorpion Bounty Hunter knew, unless he's part of the, he was a part of the Royal Guards, which I don't really remember if he was or not for this review, but she's about to go cannon busters, and she's about to blow up Philly the Kid, and I guess we're supposed to have sympathy or something for Philly the Kid, but I can't because, like I said, he's been dying this entire series, and two, he's immortal. I can't have sympathy for somebody if I know that they're not going to die. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not worried about him because he's just going to regenerate. This man is literally, literally regenerated from every possible wound or death imaginable at this point. And my final point is the villains. Like I said, the second storyline with Odin and Kelby should have been the main storyline. It really should have because I wanted to see more of the villains. 
I can't explain to you how much, how little Philly, Sam, and Casey, their journey, if he is that's even what you want to call it, mattered. Because it didn't. They never faced the main villains until the last three episodes of the series. They faced like little small fry villains that didn't mean anything. It didn't push the narrative of the story forward. It didn't help with character development. The most character development happened within the la- literally the, the last three episodes are really the only episodes that matter because you don't find anything out within the first nine episodes. Well, I, I lied. Episode um, I said it earlier. Episode six, the unfettered is really the only time when you find out information that pertains to Philly the Kid. And that's just his parents died. That's that's it. And he sold his soul to a sorcerer so that he could become immortal. That, that That's it. That's all you need to know. Once you know that, you, you can just skip to the last three episodes. You can watch what happens to Kelby. That's when the villains are. You see all of the villains. They have all their big final fights. You see what a, uh, a cannon buster true form is. And you hear from Odin what a cannon buster does. And that's about it. Then now they're all together. Kelby is kidnapped again. And now they're all heading back to the Bodica Empire together. So you have Philly the Kid, Sam, Casey, Odin, and um, this badass character named Nine who was a samurai. I didn't bring him up in the review just because he didn't push the story or the narrative forward at all. He rode with them for one episode, then he dipped after that. He's a drunk who gets stronger the more he drinks. Makes perfect sense to me. Um, And that is about it. There's nothing else about this series. So if you made it to the end, subscribe if you're new. Like, share, comment, rate, all that fancy stuff. And yeah, I mean, just because it's black does not mean it's good. I'm sorry. Uh, mm. keep it safe and rapid tight. I'm out.